Hi everyone, my name is Richard Stubbley and I'm a process specialist for Autodesk working on Fusion 360. Hello, my name is Ben Lodge and I'm the Solid Round Tools product specialist for Sambit Coromand. So you might be wondering why are we standing next to each other, what are we doing and, and where are we? So let's go from the easy one first, where are we? We are in one of Autodesk technology centres and this one is in Birmingham, UK. Our technology centres have, have many purposes, but one of them like this is for relationships between partners and resellers and working on projects together to make sure we can get some outcomes then for you, our customers. So what are we doing? Um, if you roll back a year, Autodesk made a large announcement that we're partnering with Sandvik Coromans to try and enable the workflows that's going to help you, our customers, have more efficient processes when it comes to manufacturing components. And what better way of doing it, we thought, than creating our own aerospace component in titanium, and then a series of technical videos along with that that's going to show some of the challenges we had along the way, definitely didn't all go easy first time, and then how we sort of overcame those and the different strategies used across the platform as well. As that 12 months has passed, we've done a lot more than just bring a relationship together with the two companies. We've also integrated Sandvik's Coro Plus tool guide into Fusion 360's manufacturing environment so we can all overcome one of the biggest problems we face, and that's choosing the right tool and then the right cutting parameters along with it. So what is the Coro Plus tool guide? How do I use it and what's it for? So Coro Plus tool guide is our tool selection software. Uh, previously, it's been available on our website or as an app, uh, and we can then select the correct tool for the material and application that customers face. So once we've done that, and obviously through your software, we can then bring that data in uh, and hopefully give the customer a better experience when it comes to both selecting the tool, but also the tool path itself. Perfect. So we can now get a, a guide on exactly what tool I should be using for this application and the cutting parameters that should be then used as a guide from there. Absolutely. You know, and not only that, you know, we're looking at recommended AP and AE as well. So it'll bring all that data in and allow the customer to do that uh, in the uh, processes that they're looking at. Yeah, that's definitely going to solve some of my headaches. I know when I have a project, I always wonder how on earth am I going to attack this and then what speeds and feeds should I be using? Yeah, definitely. It's a challenge that everyone faces, like you said before, and hopefully this will make it much easier uh, for customers to do that. Yeah, it's brilliant to be an integrated solution. You haven't got to leave one application, go to the next, and then start frantically writing down numbers and inevitably make an error copying them across. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit how that's integrated into Fusion then, please. Yeah, so normally the process would be you'd create the tool manually with Fusion's tool library, and then you'd have to unfortunately manually input the speeds and feeds that you want to use. And that normally involves lots of flicking through pages and pages of catalogues and being a bit baffled really for people like me who aren't doing it every day. So the integration means we can go straight into the Coral Plus tool guide. You can give us the correct APs, AEs, and guide us on how we should be attacking this part. You know, you're gonna say, what are you doing? Are you doing side milling or face milling? And you can guide us to the correct one there. So once you've given us that data, we can pull that then directly back into the strategies where they need to be, so we can drive the machine tool at those recommended speeds and feeds and start cutting with confidence that we're gonna be making the correct part in the end. Because you can't do these things twice, they need to be right first time, and that is one of the big problems that we know a lot of people face is getting that right data first time round. Absolutely. And I suppose for us, there's no better way to kind of prove that this works by doing a part ourselves. I know, yeah, it's definitely been an interesting part for us. So remember, stay tuned for the upcoming series. We're going to cover how we did the roughing process with high feed side milling, the decisions we went down when we looked at drilling versus thread milling or tapping. And then lastly, the finishing process and some considerations about that, about how we keep that material off the tip of the tool and build it on. All live, as we can see, from our technology center here in Birmingham. So again, thanks very much for watching. Please follow the links down in the description below where we have lots more information on this integration and how you can use it and get the most out of your machine tools. So thank you, and we'll see you all again next time.